This little guy moving his abdomen a little bit should not be able to make a sound approaching 100 decibels. It seems physically impossible that something this small could make a sound as loud as a gas chainsaw revving next to your head but it is physically possible. I'm not gonna lie, this video is pretty out there. We're gonna learn about superposition and nonlinear acoustics. We're gonna learn how to flirt with cicadas to make them wanna have sex with you. And of course, we're gonna learn about a zombie cicada fungus that can make you trip balls when ingested. <laughs> Let's go. I've come down here to rural central Georgia on a field trip that I've waited over a decade for. Trillions of horny, methed out cicadas from Brood 19 have emerged in this particular location and they are completely covering everything. I'm going to record them with a custom microphone. I'm going to photograph them. I'm going to take biological samples for a mycologist. And most importantly, for your sake, I'm going to tell you a bunch of really crazy things about them. It probably sounds like I'm in the thick of it. I'm not. Let's go to the thick of it. By the way, brood doesn't necessarily mean species. It means mass birth or mass emergence. And brood 19 emerges without fail every 13 years. There are also cicadas that emerge every 17 years. What do the numbers 13 and 17 have in common? They're both prime numbers, and prime numbers is one of cicadas' self-defense mechanisms. By the way, if your math skills are a little bit rusty, a prime number is any number that is not divisible by a whole number, unless, of course, that whole number is one. This is important for cicadas because many of their predators have a two-year life cycle. So if we pair up the predator and cicadas' life cycles, you will have a staggered correlation with the prime number, leading to a higher rate of survival. Another interesting self-defense mechanism of cicadas is their sheer population numbers and just simply not really giving a fuck about surviving. Cicadas emerge in such high numbers that there's not enough food around to sustain them. The brief time of their lives that they spend above ground flying around is only meant for reproduction. This is their final act. Even if a predator doesn't get them, they'll just dry up. There's literally no purpose in surviving after reproducing something that I feel like some of my viewers probably can relate to. They don't even have traditional mouths. They have these sharp spears that they stick into trees and drink nutrient-rich fluid like a straw. You usually wouldn't even notice it because when it's not in use, it retracts down. They actually can bite you or stab you with this mouth spear of theirs. However, they don't do it for self-defense. They would have to think that you were a tree, which they sometimes do. And it would hurt really, really bad because it's a pretty big spear. Fortunately, they're not venomous and it really wouldn't be any more dangerous than getting stuck with a pin. I don't like torturing cicadas, by the way. I normally wouldn't even hang on to one of these for more than a second or two, but this guy appears to have the dreaded zombie fungus, which we'll learn about in a minute. A female cicada lays hundreds of eggs inside the bark of trees. That might be an egg. I'm not really gonna have an answer to any of this until I view it on something that's not a tiny dim screen. Nymphs will come out of the eggs, they will fall on the ground, and then they will dig their way down and latch onto tree roots and drink the nutritional tree fluid for the next 13 years. It's still quite a bit of a mystery how cicadas know how many years have passed, but on the 13th year, when the soil reaches 64 degrees Fahrenheit, they climb up ground and come out of their little holes and then climb up trees all the way onto the edge of the branches where they climb out of their exoskeletons and at the end of their first big day, they fly off to go find a mate. When the females are ready to mate, they make a clicking sound with their wings, and the males, they make a completely different sound. <laughs> I'm gonna try and pick up some dudes. Oh, here they come. <laughs> He's coming down to investigate. Last call, boys. Yeah. I found what appears to be a recently deceased male, which is good news because I want to show you how timbals work without annoying the hell out of a live one. There it is right there, the phenomenal timbal, the tiny organ that is creating up to 100 decibels. Male cicadas have two of them, and they operate a bit like a pet training clicker, except that 
the cicadas can make it click 300 to 400 times per second. So that high speed clicking oscillates and creates a drone, but it shouldn't be anywhere near 100 decibels. But the two timbals click perfectly in sync together, so in sync that the frequency and amplitude waveforms are perfectly aligned, creating a phenomenon called superposition or constructive interference. The near impossibly perfect parity of those two drones creates a new waveform that has higher peaks and valleys, thus creating more sonic pressure or louder sound, much louder than the two timbals could create on their own. Let's thank our little deceased friend here. One last flight. That was depressing. I'm looking for a cicada or cicadas with an advanced infection of Massospora, which is a fungus that you may have seen in headlines citing that there are zombie cicadas everywhere and comparing it to The Last of Us. While Massospora and Cordyceps are similar and they're both real, neither one can infect humans, so good news there. Basically, an unlucky nymph will be crawling their way up to the surface and they will come in contact with Massospora spores. It's asymptomatic for the first few days, but eventually the cicada gets filled up with a white powdery substance. That white powdery substance that they're filled with contains over a thousand chemicals, and among those chemicals is caffeinone, which is an amphetamine in cot and bath salts and sometimes even ecstasy. Another one is psilocybin. Basically, the cicadas are high out of their f***ing mind, which is a good thing because it prevents them from noticing that the bottom half of their entire body is turning into fungus powder. I've read a few articles stating that massospora makes cicadas want to have sex, and I don't really know if that's true because their only purpose of being above ground is to have sex. It probably just gives them a little bit more energy to do so. If you brought me to a putt-putt course and gave me a bunch of meth, I would probably be more competitive and enthusiastic about golf and golf a lot faster. That doesn't mean that meth makes people golf more. Massospora is also not infectious from cicada to cicada. It just helps them spread the spores around more, probably not nearly as much as the heavier fungal body mass dragging on things. Also, while spending the entire day out here examining trees while annoying a bunch of cicadas looking for an infected one, I realized that it might be easier to just detect them by analyzing the overall pitch and timbre of the male's mating call. I can only imagine it would be much different if they are literally being transformed into flying salt shakers. Apparently it's expected that something like three to four percent of brood 19 cicadas will be infected by the zombie fungus and I went through thousands of them and I could not find one that had the salt shaker body that you may have seen in photos. I did see like three or four with some suspicious stuff coming out of their rear ends and I kept them as specimens and I'm just gonna keep the inside of this wet and see if it develops over the next few days. If it does start looking like a Massospora infection, then I will put them in a smaller damp container and ship them to the mycology department of West Virginia University. I would hedge my bets that at least one of my viewers is contemplating eating some Massospora fungus or maybe the entire infected cicada in order to get high. And yeah, that would make you high if you ate a whole lot of them, but you would also be eating a whole lot of mercury and God knows what else. If you're that pathetically hard up for a psychedelic experience, it would be much easier, safer, and more fun to just find a cheap flight to a city or place where psilocybin is legal. Hey, by the way, thank you for subscribing to Cicada Facts and spending the day with me here. If you want to see more casual, fun science content that's not necessarily related to audio or music business or anything like that, let me know in the comments and I'll probably use that as validation to make some more of it. And if you want to support this channel or if you want access to a bunch of field recordings, including some that I recorded today of the cicada fields, a bunch of released and unreleased music, a really healthy community with monthly songwriting challenges that my Patreon is for you, and you can join for as little as one dollar. Anyway, thanks for watching. Keep creating. Bye.